Hello everyone, my name is Atria and today I'm going to be talking about parallax and stereo views. Uh, to be more specific, I will answer the question of whether parallax is the underlying principle behind depth perception in stereo views. Uh, the short answer is yes, uh, parallax is the reason for depth perception, uh, but let's go through it together um, and see why indeed this is the case. Uh, to do that, we first have to understand the concept of parallax and answer, understand the concept of stereo views. Uh, so let's do that together. So let's start by understanding the concept of a parallax. Uh, to do that, let's consider two cameras. Uh, let's have this camera and call it camera 1 and then let's have this camera and call it camera 2. So this is camera 1 and this is camera 2. Um, let's also have two points. Uh, let's have this point here uh, and call it point A and then let's have this point here and call it point B. Now let's have both these cameras uh, looking at the same direction, looking at these two points. So if I draw the field of view for camera 1, it will be something like this. Uh, and if I draw the field of view for camera 2, it will be something like this. Now even though uh, both cameras are facing the same direction and uh, they are both looking at similar points, if we draw out the field of view for camera 1 over here, we can see that for camera 1, the point A is to the right of point B. Uh, for camera 2, what we see that the exact opposite thing happening, we see that point B now is to the right of point A. So this is the apparent difference in the position of the object, uh, let's say object A, when viewed through two different cameras, is what we call a parallax. So now that we understand what a parallax is, let's talk about a very important application of the parallax. Uh, let's first draw two cameras like we did last time. Let's call this camera 1 and let's call this camera 2. And let's assume that the distance between these two cameras is C. And these two cameras are looking at an object over here, object A, at two different angles here. Okay, so if while observing parallax, we know the distance between the two cameras, which is this distance C over here, and we know the angular difference in observation between the two cameras, which is this angle here, uh, let's call this angle theta, this is also called the angle of parallax. We write this down, angle of parallax. Yeah, so if we know this angle, the angle of parallax, um, which we have called theta here, we can determine the distance of each camera to this object. So knowing these two things would help us determine this distance here. Let's call this distance B from this camera to this camera, as well as this distance, let's call this distance A, from camera 2 to the object. Um, so this is an important application of parallax. If we know C, which is the separation between the two cameras, and theta, which is the angle of parallax, we can determine distance B between camera 1 and A, and we can determine distance A between camera 2 and A. What we can also do is we can determine the distance of A from this plane here this plane here, which houses the two cameras. What we call this plane, a plane which houses the two cameras, we call this the datum plane, the datum plane. And using parallax, we can also determine the distance between the datum plane and object A, uh, which we will call H. And we do this using uh, a mathematical concept called the law of sines. The law of science. So let's talk about the law of science. Over here I've drawn a triangle. Um, in this triangle at the two corners here there is the two cameras that, that we use to look upon the object A. So here we have camera 1 and here we have camera 2 and they are looking at different angles onto object A which I've placed here. So according to the law of science we can write this relationship A by sine A equal to b by sine b equal to theta by sine c. So this is 
what the law of sine state. And from this law, and just by looking upon this triangle, we can easily find out the distance between the two cameras and the object they're looking upon, object A. Because we can write from here, from this relationship, B equal to theta sine B by sine C. We can also write A equal to theta sine A by sine C. Another relationship we can write is we can find out the height H. That is the distance between the object A and the datum plane, which is this, this plane right here, this plane, a plane where the two cameras are placed. We can write that as H, which is the distance between the plane and A, equal to B sine A. Or we can write down H equal to A sine B. Now, the derivation of this on why h equal to a sin b or b sin a is actually very simple and I will leave it up to you to do it on your own. So now, we have learned how, using parallax, we can calculate the distance of an object from a given plane. Now, instead of two cameras, let us observe an object using our eyes. So we have two eyes. Let's draw them here. Let's draw our eyes here. And let us observe the same object, object A, using our eyes. Okay, so as you can see, our left eye will look upon the object at a slightly different angle than our right eye. So over here we have two different angles. And our left eye is looking upon the object at a slightly different angle than our right eye. And this angle is based on the spacing between our two eyes which is this space here. For most humans, this separation is between 60 to 63 millimeters. You know, as a quick experiment, what you can do is stick your thumb out in front of your face and then look at the thumb by covering each eye alternatively. You will see that the thumb will shift from left to right based on which eye you're covering. So when we look upon the object with both eyes, what we are actually doing is gathering two separate images of the object by viewing them at two different angles. Once these images are sent to our brain, the brain will combine them together using the method of parallax that we just discussed and this will give us a real-time sense of how far each point on our observation is from us. This ability to perceive depth to see things in 3D by viewing an object with both eyes is called stereo view. And this stereo view is enabled by the underlying principle of parallax which we discussed today. Uh, so fun fact, uh, fishes you know, who have two eyes on two different sides of their face lack the ability to perceive things in 3D uh, because they don't have this parallax ray combination going on. They don't have stereo views. Stereo views is also the reason why we can enjoy movies in 3D, but maybe that's a discussion for another time. Uh, thank you for listening and I really hope you like the video.